Yes, sir. Nancy is present and accounted for. Yay. All right. The uh, y'all got it recording or Bradford County Commissioners will meet in workshop session August 16th, 1:30, Commissioner's Courtroom. Uh, first item is to call to order, and the second is open discussion for FY 22-23 proposed budget. Okay. So what we have. You got four documents. One with the staple. Let's do that one first. This is the, we're calling it the requested budget because the proposed budget has an official name called the proposed budget. We're not there yet. We're getting there though. Did an analysis. This is where the requested budget sits today. Um, tax rate, uh, excuse me, tax revenue is at the same 91 million that was brought in are budgeted for um, 21-22. Total revenues, 170 million, 222-612. Total expenditures, 196, 154, 855. A deficit, meaning more expenses than expenditures than revenues of $25 million in the current requested budget took those numbers and, well yes and broke them out into based on the philosophy that you want to keep your tax rate or you want to have your MO revenue equal or maybe a tad bigger than your ongoing operating expenditures which include salaries then salaries benefits Office of all your all your uh, all your departmental support, your repairs and maintenance, your contract services. So took this total and divided it into two columns: recurring every year and one-time expenditures. If you look at the expend uh, revenues reoccurring every year versus the expenditures reoccurring every year, your current deficit is $6,187,385. If you add on top the positions that were prioritized during budget workshops, your total deficit for ongoing reoccurring expenses and revenues is $7.6 Your one time, which is generally things that you would want to fund out of fund balance, um, because you're not expecting, you know, once you spend the money on that, you're not expecting to spend it again on the same project, which is where ARPA is. Okay, ARPA's in here, and I went ahead and gave a little note about what all is in this 21 million one time. Also, next year's anticipated ARPA revenue replacement recognition of 8 million. The ARPA expenditures are included in general government because at this point we don't have a more specific expenditure function that we want to put those in yet. We're looking at many things, but we haven't gotten there yet. Um, okay. Following Commissioner Barry? No, I'm, I'm here. Uh, okay. I'm just trying to figure out why you can't see me. We can see you. Oh, okay, good. You're small. We have you small in the corner. No, we'll put that's fine. There That's you are. where I am. Okay. <laughs> Do you, did you get the documents that I sent? Yes, okay. I did. Good. Um, one time deficit is 19,744,848. What's included in the expenditures based on the workshops is three, the seven and a half percent COLA, the benefits for the COLA, the 1% merit, the benefits for the merit, the increase in employer contribution for health insurance. Um, we did decrease, you know, it, in, it does not include any transfer for other post-employment <coughs> benefits because we did chose to do that this year. So twice in 21, 22 and none in 22, 23. Um, we, the increase to road and bridge operational budget was 8.3 million. Um, 
a lot of that is, I think it's 4.9, is for projects that we have barely started. We've done the awards, we've done the POs, but they haven't really started any of the work, and so we're expecting um, Jack Manning Road Bridge, uh, Peach Creek Cutoff, and the bridge scours to go into next year, so that's what some of that is. Um, and I also listed all the new positions and their totals, including new computer, any other equipment needed for the position, um, including, do we include cars in these 152? We did, didn't we? Yeah. Including cars if necessary. Um, so the total in the new position is 1.4. Brings our deficit to the 7.6. Next page is going to be your tax rates. As we talked about last, apparently, y'all like the 3-5 at the end, so I adjusted okay. what we did. So yes, sir. We, let me, one, one question before we move off of page one on the yes, summary sir. of requested budget. Okay. This does not include the additional potential revenue at the no new revenue rate of 2.55 million. No. Okay. So it doesn't include any increase okay. in property tax okay. so revenue. In, in, so just just new value would that would be <coughs> netted against that recurring every year number? Yes. Okay. And so that's at the no new revenue rate that would be the two and a half. Two and a half million. Which is okay. Yeah, that's so what's on the next that, page. We've got that cleared down. Okay. Yes. I, I, I just showed the 7.6 deficit so that you could see that's in your operating. So when we go to the next page, which is the analysis of possible tax rates, it looks very similar to the one y'all saw the last workshop, except I narrowed it down on the tax rates um, since I think Commissioner Barry requested 4635. And I think there was a discussion of 4435. Apparently the 35. <laughs> anyway, so I just did one cent in between each rate. So yep. new new revenue rate would bring in 2.5 million additional to address the 7.6 deficit. 7.6? 7.16. Can't remember. 7.6. So that cuts that down to about five million. Yes. Five million one twenty-two. Yes. Okay. Um, if you wanted to do the entire seven point six tax rate, could be set. This is M and O, excuse me, M and O and debt service for uh, forty-five thirty-five per hundred forty-five cents, forty-five point three five cents per hundred dollar valuation. There we go. Okay. That would bring in nine point four four three five. 4435 would bring in 5.7 to address the 7.6 deficit. Okay. okay, and I don't know why this number. Okay, you need it to the seven, six, seven. Any questions <coughs> on that? So the, okay, so you said the 0.4535. Okay. That would cover all of the 7.6. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then the other thing that we did was, oh, this was the fund balance analysis that I think you requested. I'll leave it up there if you want to. Yeah. I, I requested this because uh, I uh, wanted us to take a look at, you know, back in uh, prior to Senate Bill 2 going into effect, we went ahead and increased our rate uh, back when it was uh, still available uh, to go up by 7%. And remember, we increased our m and tax rate. Uh, if you take a look, that was the 0.4475 on our m and tax rate in 2019. Well, after we did that, what happened is, is our unreserved, un uh, restricted fund balance grew by 27 million dollars if you look at the difference between uh, line 16 and line 17 from 59 to 19 to 86 523 
and uh, <clears throat> so we started to accumulate more of an unrestricted, unreserved fund balance, and then uh, projected so far this year on line number 18 for 2021 to 22, uh, our projected fund balance our current year to date if you look at the year to date numbers on where we are that would be 96 million dollars so what i wanted to just show is is our unreserved unrestricted fund balance as a percentage if you look over in the far right column uh we've gone up to seven we had been running uh about 50 percent on a traditional basis, but after we went ahead and uh, made some increases there, we're back to where our unrestricted, unreserved fund balance is 104% of what our received property tax revenue is. So I, I, my question is, is do we want to continue to in, increase that unreserved, unrestricted fund balance uh, which at the no new revenue rate would continue to grow, assuming uh, all things equal, that, that was a $10 million increase year to date so far. That's why the asterisk is there. Um, do we need to have 104% of our annual received property tax revenue in an unreserved, unrestricted fund balance when in the past, uh, we've been closer to the 50% mark, uh, and, and for that reason, uh, I wanted to bring that up. And that's that, that's what that doesn't. And then we haven't really included additional 20. Assuming that we look at uh, a medical examiner's office, we still haven't included the 20 million dollars of. Uh, Recovery Plan Act money that's still out there that could be used for capital, or since that would all qualify under the uh, lost revenue rate, we could use it for any general purpose as far as that goes. So if you really want to take a look at it, you could add another $20 million onto that $96 million year to date because that is not restricted by the Treasury's rules and for that reason I think we need to as opposed to continuing to accrue a large fund balance as a percentage of our uh, uh, relative to our property tax revenue that we receive uh, I think uh, it makes sense for us to operate at the no new revenue rate and then uh, if we do that then in forward when we go forward we do bank the reserve between the no new revenue rate and the voter approved rate that we can call upon in the future as a voter approved rate so that's one of the reasons that I wanted to advocate that we do this at the no new revenue rate as a target to start with and uh, this information indicates to me that we could adopt the no new revenue rate and although we're projecting an ongoing uh, five million dollar annual uh, recurring deficit in this budget uh, we have $10 million in growth and run the reserved unrestricted capital that we could use for that uh, this year to where we'd still be in the same position uh, where we were when we started the year. So I think what we need to remember is that, you know, along about that 2019, 2020 COVID hit and we pretty much shut down not only the county, but capital projects, road construction, all that stuff, which I think is the prime reason why that fund balance grew in those two years that it did because we weren't spending money on road construction and, and those sorts of things that we had in the past and and I think you're you're well aware 
of the road projects out there that need to happen, and they, uh, you know, there's without money. That's the only way it happens is is to uh, have that money available to to do whether it's road construction or or other capital projects that are needed out there that we we've, we've got you know, a need for. So I, I can see it's clear when that happened, and it happened right about the time COVID happened when we pretty much shut everything down, everybody shut down, and the growth came in to the budget at, at that time. So hopefully moving forward, uh, we won't experience that again, and I hope we can move forward with a bunch of the capital type projects that need to happen. And so I, I don't think I would use 19 and 20, you know, those, those as what we think is going to happen in the next few years. I mean, I'm hoping that we're going to get some things done, some needed things done. So I'd be cautious about projecting that growth in, in fund balance based on, on what I'd call an anomaly uh, with, the, uh, with what happened with COVID, when pretty much shut everything down. Well, we were, we're making up for the compensation where we went for a zero during the year of COVID. Uh, since with the 7.5% and 1% merit, we're making up for that zero year that we had there. But the bottom line is, is even though we were conservative in 19, you know, in 19 and for the 19 to 20 budget and for the 2021 budget, our received property tax uh, income still increased. And, and, the, uh, and, and I think we went like 97%. I guess the question gets to be is, is what percentage of our annual revenues is prudent for us to have as a unrestricted, unreserved fund balance. And I don't, I, I clearly don't, I, I, could, I could not justify 104% uh, of our annual revenue in an unrestricted, unreserved fund balance. And with costs going up, we need to commit more of that capital now to the capital needs that we have in this budget as opposed to holding on to this money that we're not making That's exactly my we're not point. making much we're, but we're not making much of a return That's exactly on my point. and so I, I guess my question is is why do we need to hold on to 104 uh, percent estimated of our uh, uh, annual MO tax revenue so I don't think we do need to okay. and in fact the reason I, I think if you look, COVID hit, we pretty much shut down. And I'm not talking about whether we uh, didn't give the raises because we didn't know what was going to happen. I'm talking about the capital project. The, the road construction pretty much shut down. Road and bridge went home, as, as did most people in the county. We pretty much shut down all types of construction because, because of COVID. We couldn't uh, be in one place working together. So the construction cost, and I'm not talking about just employee cost, I'm talking about construction cost. They went down. So that's the reason I believe that fund balance increased to the degree it did in those, in, in those two years. But I, if we do what I think we should do and now try to catch up on some of those capital projects that we did not do in those two years, then I think that fund balance is going to drop back a significant amount. And, and then we're going to have some projects done that we needed to have done, but because of COVID, we pretty much closed down a lot of things. But that's not in this budget. We don't, we don't have any, in, in this budget, we're funding. But, but because, it's not, because it's not in there, because we've, we've aimed at no new revenue tax, and that's where most things have been that's where KD has been plugging in at that level. I don't think that the request for new employees, I don't think that's included yet into this budget. Is that correct? Yes, it is. That's the 7.672. It's in the 7.6 because it's 1.4 million in new, rep, new positions. Okay. 
so you've already got them in there. Yes. Oh. And, yeah. and, and what you're seeing today, not in the system, but today. not in the but, system, but what you're right here. Okay. This is before the positions. This is the positions, and then this is after we add in all those positions. Is 7.6 deficit. And okay. from that, at the no new revenue rate, you would add an additional 2.55 million dollars in revenue. Uh, that's the number, the top top number on that tax sheet, the 255, two million five hundred fifty thousand one hundred and twenty six dollars. So that takes the annual uh, recurring fees down to five million one hundred and twenty two thousand three hundred and thirty five. Uh, projected, you know, uh, why not take that growing fund balance and use that to fund that? Uh, I mean, and, and I'm 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 very very pleased that we're in a position where we can say we're doing a a, a very significant beyond what I thought we could afford uh, seven and a half percent. Uh, increase cost of living adjustment for employees uh, and adding more positions than we've added before and our unreserved unrestricted fund balance is now 96 million dollars it grew by 27 million dollars uh, between 20 and 21 and uh, so far year to date, we're up about 10 million on the estimate. So we're accruing more money, but we're not putting it to work. And I think we need to, uh, I think we need to do the no new revenue rate as our tax rate, because that would not impair our unrestricted, unreserved uh, fund balance. Uh, which is now 104% of our received property tax revenue, it wouldn't impair that uh, significantly, and maybe that would continue to grow. A, one, one way or the other, we're not back to the, uh, we've got $10 million before we get back down to where we were at the final actual fund balance, which was 97% of 2000, 2021's taxes, tax revenue. Commissioner. So I, I, I just don't, I don't understand why we need to build this unreserved, unrestricted fund balance. We need to either put that money to use or we need to not request additional revenue from taxpayers in Brazos County because we're going out and we put today a re the uh, uh, RMA funding referendum out for November, and we also uh, are going to be going to the voters and asking them for to approve a hundred million dollar bond referendum, which should keep our uh, tax rates on our debt service side relatively the same. But we're we're asking them to do all those things. In that type of time, I don't think we need to be asking them for additional property tax revenue when we when we're clearly well above anything that we've been above you know anywhere where we've been with the exception of 2013-14, uh, we're still well well in excess of, of that. Commissioner, yes, you said something a little bit different now that made me think on that 96 million for okay. current fund balance okay that includes 8 million of ARPA so it's really 90 uh, excuse me 88, 88. million yes yeah. It gets yeah well that's the ARPA for the first year it's not the ARPA for the second year well we have 6 million set aside from because we don't update restricted fund balances until the end of the year okay. we've been doing it constantly um, and so the 96 doesn't include the six million from nine thirty twenty one, okay. but it does include eight million recognized in twenty one twenty two. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So and, and I, it changes it a little. I yeah. wanted to be clear. 
Okay. So is part of the fund balance from about this eight, year? Eight million. That's uh, next year's, right? Yes. That's, that's a projection okay. next year. But some of the fund balance that's in this year would be ARPA, correct? Uh, no, the eighty million that was estimated at budget takes out the ARPA funds. It reduced. Um, I don't know if you remember the formula okay. for that we did for the eighty million. It takes that out. So to be so apples to apples, 80. what you're saying yes. is is that ninety six million dollar figure on twenty one twenty two's line more realistically would be eighty eight million. Yes. Okay. So 88 I'm million. sorry to throw a wrench. No, no, it's just no, you said it differently, and no, I thought, oh wait. No, that's fine. Uh, I want you know I want the right numbers as far as that goes. But our over what we budgeted, we're still going to be increasing. I mean, year to date, we've increased uh, the uh, fund balance by a million five hundred thousand dollars. I, I uh, when we still got when we still got recovered plan act money because I agree with you uh, we did get behind on capital and I do uh, you know but we're asking the voters to approve a uh, referendum for a hundred million dollars over the next five years uh, to uh, help with that and uh, we've still got if we were to take our um, fund balance as a percentage of uh, received, we'd still be at a hundred percent of what was received in 2020-21. It would be a hundred percent, that's about a hundred percent, a little less than a hundred percent of the eighty-eight million eight hundred and sixty-two thousand. So, so I, I think you know, if we're not going to put it in capital in this budget before costs go up, we need to not ask voters for additional money while we're still asking for an approval of a RMA funding and a uh, revenue uh, and a bond for. Uh, transportation and mobility improvements, I, I think we can get by on this budget and do just fine and still have the capital available. One thing I do have a concern with is, is we don't have budgeted, and it would make sense to me to budget and restrict a balance in emergency funds and actually put it into the budget that would take this out of the unreserved, unrestricted amounts to where we had uh, we covered revenues. The, the, the conservative estimate was, is let's do that with, uh, let's have three months? The numbers are up there. Okay. One month is 12 million. And I, I brought it up here, but we have only set aside, when we calculate our fund balance for our operations and emergency, we only have 10 million set aside. One month of expenditures is 12. So yeah, we do need to increase that 10 million. One month yeah. is twelve million. Twelve million mm -hmm. two forty-five. So thirty-six million three months. And we only, have ten, aside, and we only right. have ten that's actually budgeted for that. And I do think we need to add more money to that. To that would be a worst-case scenario. All of a sudden, our revenue went to zero uh, for some reason, which I can't really imagine. But if that were the case. That's the recommend. That would be a recommended amount to have as this three months operating, uh, or twenty five percent. You know, twenty five percent. So that would, you know, over Same next thing. over the next couple of years, if we continue to get this to grow, then you know, add add twelve million dollars a year to that over the next couple of years and that would take it out of the unrestricted unreserved fund balance and we'd have that contingency there well even if it's in the unrestricted unreserved it can be used for emergency i mean that's the yes that, that is part of the reason that whether it's whether well, it's there or the other it still can be used right. for emergency and, and and the same same thing and for we did when when McAllister failed and that was a million dollar that 
uh, million two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. That's where we pulled it from, and I think you IG and N when we when that one failed, yeah. we pulled it there yeah. rather than pulling it from the the emergency fund, which we could have, it would have qualified, but but we pulled it from the unrestricted uh, fund balance. Yeah. I mean those well, those I mean, are sorts of things that you continue to. I I, uh, I mean I, you know as far as capital projects, I mean you know I'm not sure where. They all get funded. My thought was that ARC funds, but for instance, the BISD building. You know, we know that we're fixing to, we, we, we're going to have a uh, public defender's office that we're, we're starting here in this building, right. but over the next two years it's going to grow. Uh, and I think if it grows into a regional, it'll grow significantly. And so that building, we, we've got to be on a plan pretty quick about taking a look at that building and potentially uh, gutting that building and using it as, as partially at least, maybe half of it for a public defender's office and maybe the other half for something else. Big capital project, lots of money. Whether it eats up the fund balance already and it's gone, or whether it's art funds, it's still money that's going to be needed. Uh, we've talked about training a lot. That sanctuary down there is another area that I believe is an excellent spot for training for, for the whole county. That'd have to be gutted and, and worked on. So big projects, lots of money. There's, there's some big projects that are needed. Uh, and, and as we move forward, that, that public defender's office, we've got to be prepared for it. Uh, like I say, we're at, we had this, we fixed it to where we can make it start out the first two years, right. but past that, it's not going to work. And so we, we've got to move forward. Right. And, and I hear, you know. I, it, we haven't done an assessment, but I mean, with regard to those two things, we haven't done an assessment of what's available space in the north end of this building. We haven't, well, within the needs, two years, we, we haven't done an assessment of what, once we get the gymnasium part of this building cleared out, what we could do for that because you could put that in and it could be two floors we haven't done an assessment of uh, uh, you know what we're going to do for the first floor of the Bryan Tran the Brazos Transit District building that's uh, attached attached to the uh, east end of the garage so that's why I've been advocating that we do a facilities needs update like we did back in 2005 <laughs> Well, our money will probably be gone uh, by the time we get that study done. That took us a while to get it done. I mean, so we, uh, you, I think you have to have a plan and decide, okay, here's where the logical place for, let's say, a public defender's office is over there. Then we need to have the assessment of quick, you know, uh, the engineers take a look at that building and make sure that it, we, we believe based on the preliminary assessment that the building is sound. But they need to go in and take a look at it and then have architect and engineers look at how it could be reconfigured to make it work. But, the, but with the cost of all this stuff going up, we're not even addressing those issues in this budget. Because we've, the aim has been to do no new revenue. And at no new revenue, I don't think you're going to have that kind of money. No, I'm, no, I'm talking about the fact that we have a hundred and uh, that we have what is 88 million as a percentage of uh, 91,894. If you, if you put say? that, if you put, if you take that spreadsheet, which one, and put in instead of the 96 million, if you put in the 88 million because you said right. it was eight million of what? What? Is this what you want? Right. 96%? Yes, sir. You've still got 90, sitting in an unreserved, unrestricted fund balance, you've still got 96%. But if you reduce that by 36 million for, you don't have that much for emergencies. Yeah. Well, and again, whether on the emergency side of it, whether it is in an emergency fund that is dedicated just to that, or whether it's a, it's you, it's all available, it's all available, okay. and it can be used. So, you know, you pull that out of that unrestricted mm -hmm. as a, you know, it's not it's not it's not dedicated and locked in as that, 
but you in your mind you got okay well we still need to keep another 12 million dollars or whatever for that well then that pulls another 12 million dollars out and then you start adding in what the cost of all these capital projects that that we know need to happen uh, and roads I mean we got you know I mean, we got both both y'all's precincts 20, have got 20 million roads. That's so I'm, I'm looking forward yeah. to the approval if we can get it for the 20 million dollars of non-system roads right. that are in the bond issue yeah uh, that's all going to Tuesday <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it there might be a big man. fight up there. Okay. So, so now what's your? I'm right. just saying that yeah. fund balance, that unrestricted uh, fund balance. There's plenty of needs, uh, capital needs. Uh, okay. I, I hate to start sticking that money into operations where, if you don't have the revenue source to pay for it next year and the next year and the next year. If you're only pulling it from from fund balance, then it's you know it's like eating up your savings, you know. Well, I, I, and I'm I not understand saying you that. That's what that was. What was the alarming thing on the uh, the use of fund balance when the uh, health district was uh, directed exactly. to reduce their fund balance, yeah. uh, and the glide path got out of uh, whack. But the, yeah. but the difference is is there's. Uh, If you took um, 36 million out of the 88 million, you're down to 57 percent. 36 right. million being okay. the 90 but I mean, days. That's but but heretofore that's been kind of ignored as a part of our budgeting process. Well, it may have it, it wasn't locked into that, but that's what we looked at when you had when you had something fail, and we have had plenty of things fail mm -hmm. sure. uh, that we had to pay for and had to come up with the money, and that's where it came from. Yeah. So it's not like it was. You know, oh, we didn't want to worry about it and just let it grow. Well, it it did, and especially in the last two years, it's grown. But but uh, all that money was available for any kind of emergency that came up, whatever right. came up, whatever need came up that the county had to get done, we got it done. And I, I just, like I said, I uh, I'm pleased that we can do more additions of people than we have done on a trend basis. Uh, as opposed to eight, what was eight was our average? Nine, eight or nine. Eight or this nine. Is 14. And, and this one it's fourteen, mm -hmm. uh, and we're able to do a seven and a half percent plus one percent uh, to uh, address some of the issues, hopefully, for uh, uh, recruitment and retention uh, of uh, some of our vacant positions. But I can't. Yeah, we, even if we look at it apples to apples and say, okay, 104%, um, if you take out the uh, 26 or 27 million additional, because we've already got 10 there, right? And that doesn't show up in the unreserved, unrestricted fund balance? Yes. Okay. Correct. So we, you take another 27 out of that to get to the three months. Of expenditures, I was saying, correct. Okay, so if you take eighty-eight and you take uh, twenty-seven out, twenty-seven of it out, and say that's what we want to have, we're still at sixty-six. Sixty-six percent. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're when we're asking for approval for a bond issue, and we're asking for approval. Uh, of a uh, fee in registration, vehicle registration, to go to, and, and then, um, and we've got twenty million dollars that doesn't show up in here of unrestricted, net unrestricted recovery plan act money. We've got plenty of money to do this, to do this as no new revenue, in my opinion. And I've, I've spoken way too long, so I'll give somebody else a chance. Judge, I'm going to speak on behalf of the no new revenue rate. I think we've got a one-time opportunity. I don't know that it will ever happen again in our lifetime that we could lower the tax rate for our citizens to 0.429411. And I, I think 
even using the no new revenue uh, rate, we can make this bu this budget work. So I'm, I'm, I guess, in concurrence on, on that rate. And, and, and well, one thing I, I neglected to point out too, anything, any increment of the differential between the no new revenue rate and the voter approved rate, we carry that forward into what would be next year's voter approved rate. That's a part of Senate Bill 2. So if we don't use the increment of going to the voter approved rate, then we, we bank the ability to be able to use that into next year's voter approved rate. But one year drops off. Right. It only carries two years. But right. Can, can you give me a quick description of what he's saying there? In other words, instead of... <laughs> instead of the, it's a new concept. Le we're, we're talking legislation, so there's right, not right. a quick... I don't want to mess it up. Sorry. Christy, will you, help, will you help me understand that? You're asking about the unused increment, yes, correct? Am I right? We can go up three, three and a half percent every year without asking the voters to approve that? You can go up what is considered three and a half percent on your M and O rate. Yes. Okay. Uh, that is correct. And that's the difference between the no new revenue and the voter approval rate, the initial calculated. So, so what I thought I understood approval. Commissioner Aldrich to just say is, is that we could bank the differential for, for another year. In other words, if our situation changed in the following mm -hmm. year, we could go up more than three and a half. That's a new process that has been put in place wherein if the jurisdiction does not go up to their voter approval rate, they can take the difference and hold it aside. Now what you have to understand is that first year that you're putting it aside, it doesn't count. They take it right back, the calculation does. It actually, there's supposed to be three years of additional revenue that you could have taken. And that's what you're seeing right now basically in your voter approval rate, you see some increase there from unused increment of the previous two years. But in the calculation, remember that this very first year back, while it's put out there, the calculation that was put in place in the legislation subtracts it. So it's not available the first year back. It would be available technically the second year in back. In the following years. Yeah. Which so would be you go back three year. years, but the first year doesn't count. Which was but an we interesting would qualify thing. for that with any unused increment this year. The unused increment this year yes. will not be available next year, but any portion you have not used for the two previous years is available to you. Okay. <laughs> I apologize for being so confusing, but that's exactly I what think it I is. I actually understand. Yeah. <laughs> Job well done. Good. Come see me. I'm like, <laughs> okay. I need help. <laughs> so. So in this voter approved rate that we're looking at on the sheet that's been prepared. You're seeing unused increment from 19 and 20. Okay, which is, you could go up a voter approved rate, you could increase revenue by $22.5 million this year. Okay. I'm not looking at she, the calculation, she addresses I'm sorry. a bunch of jurisdictions, so <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. why I do it. <laughs> okay. I, I believe did, in my certification, my I biggest. gave you the initial voter approval rate that was adjusted for sales tax. And then I gave you the voter approval rate with the unused increment. And I'm assuming that's the one that's been used in this calculation. Okay. Yes. It gives us headroom to make up the difference. And I think while we're asking people for a bond issue and a referendum to uh, give revenue to the Regional Mobility Authority, and we still have $20 million net of Recovery Plan Act money that we could use for any general purpose that's not even reflected here in this $88 million. Uh, I think we can do the no new revenue rate and not, and, and try to do the best job that we possibly can for taxpayers in Brazos County. And if we make a uh, let's say we can't make up that difference of that 5.17 uh, million, I'm sorry, of the 5.122 million. 
in continuing operations. Obviously looking at the voter approved rates that we have for this year, which will probably go up because we've used less of the, uh, you know, we didn't use all of the voter approved rate in uh, 21. So it, 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 this, this amount would actually increase on the voter approved rate. I, I, I think we can, I think we can do with the ARPA money that's there that's unreserved and unrestricted still net of taking out $22.5 million for a medical examiner's office and that we could use for capital or that we could use for uh, facilities like you talked about. I think we're in good shape to uh, pass along to uh, the taxpayers and property owners in Brazos County uh, a request of we don't want additional revenue from you on taxes. So in the discussions we've had about ARFA money, there's been uh, plenty of needs identified and then requests to use that money, and I don't know what the total was, but it could have been as much as $100 million. Yes. We got 44. Correct. So we, we know that the ARPA money is going to get, we can use all of that and it's gone. Mm -hmm. And it's for things that are needed, but Correct. it's all, it'll be all, all gone. And, and that's not going to take care of all of these capital projects, whether it's roads or whether it's all these other capital projects are out, out yeah. there that we know need to happen. So, I mean, you keep bringing up that, but to me, it's like counting it twice. You know, well, it could be used over here, it could be used over there, but it can't be used for both because there's not enough there to do it. No, I'm just making and making the statement that that's not I, reflected. I you, that that's not reflected in the 88 million dollars of final action. Well, because fund we haven't come to an agreement about whether what yeah. what that money's going to get spent on. Certainly, it and that's be we, it would be if we did all if we'd have come up here and we said okay we want that to happen and we want this to happen we want it, and we plugged it in there it'd be in there, but we haven't made that decision yet. That's yeah. the only reason it's not in there. But it will get plugged in. Well, the money will get plugged in there for I think for capital projects. I don't know what they'll be because we hadn't made the decision about what the capital projects. But, but that be. will have net zero effect on the eighty-eight million dollars. But you keep adding it in. That is here. We'll still have, because this final actual fund balance of eighty-eight million dollars does not include any of the ARPA funds. Correct. Correct. So there's a there's a hundred and eight million dollars. If you use the twenty-two million dollars. Okay. Let's say well, let's say we use twenty two and a half million dollars on of the forty four and a half million dollars. Let's say we use twenty two and a half million dollars on the uh, medical examiner's office. Okay, well, according to the estimates that we've got. Okay, that still leaves uh, twenty million dollars minus what we've already spent out of it, minus what our fee is to our administrator that still leaves us 20 million dollars that we haven't said what that's going to happen for that could be the capital one of the items that's on there on the capital list on the list of priorities i went back over and looked over them again was refurbishment of the uh, you know but but that 20 million dollars is not in this 88 million dollars judge it's a hundred and that would make that would bring that unrestricted under the ARPA funds that we don't have committed beyond what we think we might use for the medical examiner's office would bring that uh, final actual fund balance estimate up to a hundred and eight million dollars. Judge? Go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, I think the no new revenue tax sounds great, but I think it's short sighted. We need to look into the future. We need to look five, ten years down the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, this no new revenue tax is going to put us behind the eight ball. I'd like to propose that we cut uh, our property tax rate by 0.5% uh, uh, so that we go to 
Do you mean point four eight three five? Four eight four eight eight five. <laughs> you had to recalculate. You were kids. You were set on okay. three five last time. Okay. <laughs> You're I killing think me. that was I'll the number back. I I'll gave. Go back to four, four eight three five is Thank good you. with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Commissioner. I'm just going. I got stuck okay. on the three five. Four eight I, four eight three five is good. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I really. That was the number I suggested our last time. Yeah, no, she changed it. Yeah. I, 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 I can't support that because if, if we look at $5 million difference in recurring costs and we've been accruing, even with putting $10 million into road capital in this budget and rebuilding their facility, road and bridge, and doing the uh, work that needs to be done on their administration office, uh, which is greatly needed. That's in this budget, in the capital, in this budget. Uh, and also their equipment. There's like a, a significant amount of equipment that they need. Mm -hmm. um, Just uh, one truck, I, one dump truck. I can't, I, I So I, the, I mean, that it's just estimates, and we've noticed that goods have been coming in, they have been 25 to 50% more than what we're mm -hmm. just guesstimating as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Commissioner Berry, to address your issue about down the road, uh, I, I since we do bank the entirety for the next two years of the unused increment, we can, under the voter approved rates, if we find out we can't keep costs as low and fund things with the money that we have available, we're not boxing ourselves in. We still have that unused increment that we can use next year uh, and increase the revenue by well more from the sheets that we've got here by well more than Twenty million dollars of annual revenue. Uh, I don't see that. Uh, well, to take a look at the sheet that you have that uh, compares all the tax rates. Okay, and under our current voter-approved rate, we could increase revenue by twenty-two and a half million dollars. No, well, we're not going there. Okay, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, is if we don't use any of the increment and we try during a period of time when we're asking for a bond referendum and when we're asking for uh, the largest increase in uh, payroll uh, that we've uh, done since I've been a commissioner, uh, and we're asking for and we're getting more people than we've ever done before since I've been a commissioner, uh, and we still bank the ability to be able to fund that $5 million differential in on annual uh, ongoing revenue. I, no. I'm comfortable with that. But yeah, well, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I'm and, not. And, and by banking, I mean, you're, you're saying banking, but the, but the thing you have to do is you've got to first recognize that you've got a problem, and then you probably will have to raise the tax rate to, to offset that, that problem, and you're dealing with something that you're, you've got right now, but you're not going to receive revenue to take care of it until the future. So to me, that's not a good way to look at it. If you're going to, you, you, I think the, the way that we have done it, and I'm, I realize that the, the fund balance has gone up significantly in the last couple of years, and there are some reasons why that happened. But there are still needs out there that we have not been able to address it, but we can address. We do have some funding, and as long as we've got the revenue coming in, we can continue. We get new roads in every year. We, we accept subdivisions and get new roads in, and there's always more maintenance out there and uh, on roads. And so uh, we can either, you know, we can try to make sure we've got the money to take care of them, or we can let them fall apart. And you, you, I mean, do you know the complaints that you get when things aren't what constituents ex believe that they're going to get out there? 
Yeah. And so I, you know, I personally think the suggestion of 4835 that's a that's a penny drop off of the uh, the current tax rate. I think uh, one of the questions the, the reporter asked this morning was, y'all you, you, have said that you're not going to raise your tax rate if, if this bond issue passes and the need is. And I told her, I, I, based on today's tax revenue of what the tax rate is today, I can assure you that we would not be raising any more. And I think we can drop the tax rate some and still have assurance that we won't raise that tax rate. But I don't know where we're at in the budget yet. And that kind of concerns me that if we're telling people we're not going to raise the tax rate and then a year or two from now, then we say, okay, well, we got it in there. We got this built in uh, that we can raise it more. And then we raise the tax rate. Then people say, well, you said you weren't going to raise the tax rate. It's, it's not about the tax rate. The tax rate, it's about how much the average value home pays in taxes. Uh, wherever you set the, I mean, if, property values go up by 20%, you go to the no new revenue rate, your tax rate comes down by that amount. If well, the and that's values what, go up. That, okay. I think that's and, and so right what, there. what you're saying, what you're saying is, is that at the, at the uh, 0.4835, was that what that's you suggested, what Commissioner Barry? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. We're still asking people to pay 100 and the average homeowner in Brazos County, you're asking them to pay $115 a year more. Okay. And then we're asking them to approve a referendum for $10 per vehicle more. And then we're asking for a bond issue that the projections that are is, is that, that, that that would take our point our four different. cents per hundred tax rate on our debt service uh, back up to five percent from the projections five cents per hundred from the projections we got from our bond council that that ten dollar that ten dollar fee is not for the county it's not going to go into our budget not to be spent for us it's for transportation long term I, I, it has nothing to do with our budget i understand that but if money. you're a citizen in brazos county well, you're asking them to prove more money out of their pocket. Well, we can't control all of that, but if you are preaching that the tax rate should not go up any higher than we needed, any additional, the 4.835, as I suggested last time, is what I think. Uh, looking at what we are attempting to do. Everything's not in that budget right now, and it's never been that we have been able to budget everything, but we have thought of future endeavors, and that's what we're looking at. Okay. We're trying to be re realistic, and I've tried to be quiet. Uh, I'm not in this for sound bites, but this commissioner's court has been very successful in the past of looking and uh, trying to assess the needs. And we have to consider future needs too. So I, I, I'm not gonna argue the point anymore. I do believe it is fiscal responsible for us to set the rate at point four eight three five, as I suggested last Tuesday. I'm not going to beat a dead horse, uh, and that's all I've got to say. I, I'm tired of short-sightedness, and whatever motivates other people. Uh, I'm not going to try to even understand it or argue the point. Because sometimes my grandmother would say, arguing with fools don't get you anything. Well, so I'm I, ta I leave take that offense. I take offense to be in. I'm not saying you're a fool, but well, I'm not going to argue the point. That's the inference. That's that's an inference that you're making. The concerns. We have tried. You refuse to see our concerns. I don't. I, mean, I don't understand time, why we're asking for uh, twelve 
$1.1 million more revenue from taxpayers. Because if you look at that for one, four, eight, three, you're five. one of the ones that said you need a road, you know, you need this, you need that. We've it's got money to do that. One, we've, we've, got, we've got the money in this precincts. budget is there to do that. Plus, we have reserves to do even more. Plus, there are twenty million dollars that doesn't even show up the here. The reserves are not endless. We've done a good job. Yeah. Well, we you're asking you're asking to people to pay. You're asking people to pay twelve point one million dollars more at that tax rate which translates to a hundred and fifteen dollars is that what you said of existing property owners right. you're at if you look at that figure and the, that's the, all the, the, the county point gets. four point four eight three five and that's all the county gets you're asking for an additional because two and a half two point five five million is coming from new revenue from new property okay and the total amount at 0.4835 would be an additional 14.677 million. Well, you're building into this budget since your annual uh, annual deficit would be five million dollars a year. You're asking for more than two times. I, I, we I, already I, I don't know. Get that. We already know we've got the the BSD building that's going to need reconstruction and we're talking that's a that's a yeah, I don't know what the number is uh, we haven't done any estimates but we know that that's a big number we know that if we do anything down in the sanctuary for training that's a big number we've got we've got those projects we've got other projects that need to be done and it all takes money and yeah. I I, uh, I I do think it's short-sighted to try to cut back to the no new revenue and then and then when people come in and start complaining about whatever, whether it's roads or whether it's what the air conditioner not working or whatever that mm -hmm. needs Services. to be fixed, and we don't have the money to get it fixed, then what are you going to do? Say, well, I, I, I thought it was better to cut the tax rate, so we, so I, 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 you know, I don't have a hundred people dead horse. Still you have one hundred and eight million dollars currently. That's not endless. To address that, sure That's it is. That's not a bottomless pit. You've got the reason we have that million, is because we've been million dollars in order. What we so preach. you'd be spending all of the fund we've balance there. We've been practicing and what for we whatever. preach. I mean, you just what, said uh, you need to have fiscal responsibility. Visualize for me emergency. something that would require a hundred and eight million dollars that we would appropriate. Not in all in one chunk, that's for sure. Amen. Amen. Thank you. No. It didn't get well, there by doing what you're doing. Or well, Thinking how you're the, the rate, I would support 4835. I mean, I really do. That's a penny cut off of the tax rate. I, I think that's a that's and a reasonable asking, way to approach it. And it's still asking people yeah. for more money. 100. The average homeowner is well, asking please, for 115 what, dollars more. Whatever we do, don't year. ask. Don't you ask for any roads improvement or any services to precinct one? It's built into the budget. There's 10 million dollars well, of road capital in this budget. And yeah. that goes to and all of us, yeah. all of the precinct, yeah. all of Brass County, not precinct I, one. I, I, yeah. And I'm. Uh, then I'm let's then let's put more in capital in the budget time. and not sit That's on what I would suggest. and not it's sit on a hundred and eight million dollars of taxpayers' money. I don't think uncommitted. we're sitting on it. You, 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 you keep you forgetting about COVID caused us to build that. Uh, uh, it's one of the reasons that it built. We were right. now we are we are trying to get things done. So it just because it was there. Uh, when the last couple here. of years doesn't mean that it's going to continue to be no. there. Uh, I beg to differ with you, Commissioner Cawley. When I got here, it was thirty-four million dollars, and it's now a hundred. It didn't get million. there the day you got here, or the day well, after. And as you as you pointed out a while it ago, two thousand nineteen, it made the jump. Careful. That's there's, there's reasons for it. I, I believe that we probably got behind on some capital projects especially roads but some other capital yeah. projects that need to happen we've got some money right now ready to do it and we need to move forward but it's going to take money and as we move forward to get those projects done then let's okay. appropriate it in this budget well we haven't okay. we haven't all come to an agreement about how that's going to happen no. well that's the, what the, it the, the highest rate that i could approve 
if you look at the tax year 2022 possible tax rates that would actually not increase the amount of money that we're asking from the average homeowner uh, would be 0.4435. That I could support as opposed to the no new revenue rate. But I'm not about to vote to ask people to pay an additional $12 million into a nebulous, <coughs> unrestricted fund balance account that we are building up for some unspecified for purpose. Well, I, I beg to disagree with you, uh, Commissioner. I believe that 4835 is reasonable. It's a penny reduction. It takes care of our needs. I mean, we got an estimate no. of 500000 for the uh, security at the courthouse, and now it's going to be a million. Right. Uh, with with uh, the supply chain issues and labor shortages, we don't know exactly what we're going to be coming into the future, and I think 4835 is reasonable and it's prudent. I agree. You got anything else, Kate? So I did some calculation real quick. Um, if we did the 14,677,810 dollar $14, increase in property taxes, that means we need I need direction on where you want us to budget the seven million contingency. Do you want us to budget it in capital contingency? Now you're you're asking if we if we do the four. If we do point four eight three five. I would put it in capital. And that could either go to capital roads, capital yeah. projects, because that's really where I see a need. It could Yes. So capital contingency. Cap capital, um, yes. Okay. Why is it con capital contingency? Why don't we just because you've got to budget it some way, and if you put it in contingency, it can that. be spent. If it's in fund balance, you can't spend it. Because if I put it in roads, and they're going to spend it. And it helps us keep it <laughs> straight in our mind. Because we have not approved a project for that many yet. Exactly. There's no project approved. We're still working on it. And to our reduce confusion on if it's allocated or not. Because if you put it in contingency, it's not but allocated, but it's available. It. And I'm not going to go out and tell Precinct 4 we're going to get all the roads improved because we've got a little money. That, it doesn't work that way. Well, and have, we you, still have you, have have you been in a meeting together. where I've told the constituents in Precinct 1 that that's going to happen? I refuse. Why do you even bring that up? I, because I've heard it too much. Okay. So do you, do you have anything else? No. We will go play with the calendar. we got to... It's a balancing act. We got to have a public hearing. We're currently looking at proposing on August 30th and trying to figure out how to get five days here, three days there, get the Jenga thing yes. to go together. So um, we do expect elected official salaries to go out soon. Please do what you need to Good. do. Okay. Um, we may have to, I'm sorry, Commissioner Aldrich, did you? Okay, so the of the uh, of the excess revenue that this tax rate would bring in under what we're proposing to spend in the budget, that seven million dollars will go into capital contingency. Yes, sir. Okay. And fund forty-five thousand. Fund forty-five thousand. Yes. And that would include adding all those positions. Um, and then if we, unless y'all want to, well, we'll still have contingency in general fund. If it turns out that there's positions that we have zero funded, but that we find qualified personnel for during the year, that would mm -hmm. come out of contingency mm -hmm. in general fund. Mm -hmm. If we um, choose to add additional, you know, something happens, We've got four and a half million in contingency under commissioner's court in this budget, right? Under, well, it's all under commissioner's court, but yes. Okay, so that would bring that, ele that no. level to 11,500,000. I'm sorry, say that again? That would bring that to 11,500,000. 
Because there's four We've and a half. I think there's four and a half million there. In general fund. Yes. Okay. And that would be more. We would tend to use that for maintenance and operation contingency uses, like if IT licensing went up, which I have a feeling it's going to, um, or okay. personnel again. But then in capital, it would be things, oppor construction opportunities or. Um, and before anything is spent, keep in mind this body approves or disapproves. And that's why we're going to stick it and in contingency because we, we put it somewhere else. Exactly. It, it has worked for us to call it, it contingency, this or that. But it doesn't mean that it's going to stay there. If something else needs it, we have the ability. We, the five of us, can make the changes. We approve or disapprove how it's spent, when it's spent, after we've discussed it. I am going to ask if anything has changed on your calendars for when you can be here or if you can be here August 30th, September 6th. I will make September myself 6th. available for whatever. If you don't have August a place. August 30th, I'm available. And I am September I will 6th. Be available. Um, the week available. of September because of our cal our calendar roulette, um, <laughs> the week of September sixth. If you could let us know, or you know, if there's Any anything appointments that, I have will okay. be dropped and cleared. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, September uh, sixth. September sixth is Labor Day, Monday, right? I think it's so Tuesday. Sorry? The fifth is Labor Day, right? Fifth. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm available the sixth. Yeah. What about yeah, I am too. The whole right. week. I okay. will be available. And we'll have public hearings, at least two or three public hearings that we'll have to have before we adopt. So um, we'll try to have it all on one day. One protection. One thing I've got on the 30th is a cybersecurity exercise with uh, no, with it's one that uh, Teeks is doing, but uh, it's for emergency management. And that's uh, that's twelve thirty to the thirtieth. We'll have a normal commission on Tuesday. The, on Tuesday the thirtieth. Okay, so on Tuesday thirtieth, we will approve a tax rate. Propose. Propose a tax rate. Propose. And barring, in session. barring any health crisis. Okay, and that would be on our regular commissioner's be meeting here. that morning. Okay, and then September sixth. As my 6th granny would say, if the Lord says to the sign. Adoption of everything. If the publication and public hearing can happen in the right order. And and in between, we've got to have the public hearing. And that's going to be, be. Have you set a time? For which one? Thirtieth. It'll be at the regular. Ten o'clock. That's what I thought. Next, the adoption that they uh, on the six. And that's fine. Yeah. Just do what you need to do. We're trying to figure it out. I understand. Okay, so and, so, so and listen, I appreciate what you ladies have done. I really do, because I've seen some of you here after everybody has gone home, and the building is locked. You know. Yeah. I see what you're doing and how difficult it is and believe it or not, it's appreciated. I don't want to keep but harping on it. That's why I'm glad in this budget that there is a still a provision to fill the unfilled position as budget analyst. Well, we got to get a budget first and a tax rate before that. So the adoption of the budget and the adoption and the, the voting vote to set the tax rate will be September 6th. We'll have an adoption by the 10th of September. There. Praise the Lord. Okay. Okay. Right, that's the drop, drop dead right. deadline. Huh? Okay. All right. That's it. For and then we start working after that. 248. You're out of here in less than two hours. Well, <laughs> wait. I have, Thank you, sir. I have 12 minutes to get to it. Thank you. Bye-bye.